our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. Astronauts are the stuff of dreams. Modern day heroes, these men and women are chosen for their skills and given specialist training. They're at the peak of physical and mental fitness. But humans are fashioned for life on Earth with its gravitational pull. For us, weightlessness is not natural. La première journée, on est un petit peu dérangé au niveau vestibulaire. On a Usually the first day there are problems with the balancing. It happens a lot. It's not serious and doesn't stop you from working. It's uncomfortable as though you're in a boat rolling in a heavy swell. Some people are even sick. It's different for everyone and usually disappears after a few days. Mais ça part. De toute façon, dans le pire des cas, ça part toujours au bout de un jour, deux jours, trois jours, ça part. Problems like this are caused by alterations to the balancing mechanism of the inner ear. Michel Tonini has first-hand experience. He's a veteran of the US space shuttle and the Russian space station Mir. Le même problème qu'on a eu lorsqu'on a décollé as well as space sickness, you also get a kind of earth sickness when you get back. It's hard to find your feet. You stagger around a bit. Your head feels really heavy. Your neck muscles are really weak, so when you turn your head, it feels really heavy. Astronauts are trained by the European Space Agency here at the Astronaut Center in Cologne. Once in space, their health is also monitored from here. Each astronaut has their own doctor and keeps in regular contact. On a weekly basis, I was able to talk to Frank uh, on the telephone. And uh, this is uh, an established means of communication that is completely private, so nobody else can hear about it. So it's like a doctor-patient uh, conversation that, it, that remains confidential. The Belgian astronaut Frank de Wynn was the last European to stay on the ISS. He spent six months on board, including two as captain. He and his five colleagues had a busy daily agenda in which health played an important part. The heart doesn't need to pump the blood against the gravity upwards to the brain and the brain needs the blood first so that's the most essential organ in the body so if the heart doesn't need to pump upwards it can relax the muscle would decondition and the same happens with all the other muscles uh, we don't need to stand upright now that I'm standing upright I need hundreds of muscles to keep my posture and not to fall down you don't need it in, in weightlessness so the muscles muscles decondition <laughs> So what can be done about weakened hearts and muscle wasting? The obvious solution is physical exercise using specially adapted machines. But could there be a more effective method? Astronauts lose bone mass uh, and muscle and so on and have cardiovascular problems. And they need to train about two hours per day in space. And when they train for two hours, it takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and it's not optimally effective. So we need new training methods. And such centrifuges uh, give us the perspectives to reduce the training time and have better effects. This centrifuge machine subjects the astronaut to a force of up to 3G. This is similar to the force of gravity on Earth. Efforts are now being made to adapt it to fit the ISS. Another thing that doesn't adapt well to weightlessness, bones in the human skeleton. The bone is not an organ that is built once. Uh, it is always refurbished and according to the stresses. Uh, so if you don't have the stresses, not the impact of walking, uh, the bone demineralizes and gets weak, gets osteoporotic. Osteoporosis in astronauts is a worry for their doctors, but a godsend for earthbound researchers looking for a cure for this bone weakening condition. The astronauts' experience can be used to cast light on how the condition develops. The body fluids that are pulled in our legs on, in, uh, in gravity, once in space the fluids shift back to the, to the head and it creates a puffy face with uh, swollen uh, uh, cheeks and also uh, to some extent the tongue and it alters the tasting uh, function of the tongue and the astronauts to alleviate that they tend to put more salt for example in their, in their food. 
Once in orbit, mealtimes become very important. They satisfy your hunger, they're a break in the busy work schedule, and also a much appreciated moment of relaxation. When astronauts eat a lot of salt, or when they even eat normal salt, then they start to, so to store salt in a fashion which is not known. We found out that uh, when you eat a lot of chips and, and salt and so, then your bone starts to degrade and this is not really known. Uh, so, uh, so some basic results may be very important for terrestrial application. There is also a silent enemy, radiation. The space station is protected by its casing and monitoring of solar flares means they can be avoided. But the consequences for going further afield are serious. It speeds up the general rate of cancer development. It's easy to get lethal level doses in space, and if we go to Mars without protection, then we could be talking about extremely dangerous levels. So the ISS now has an extra passenger. This dummy called Matroshka is fixed to the outside and is exposed to dangerous rays. Germany's space agency is behind the experiment. We call it a human phantom with real bones. So we have a skeleton on the space station since many years, which is uh, Matroshka, and has some material which is equivalent to the human body organs. And inside there are a few thousand radiation dosimeters for different kinds of radiation. And so we can directly measure the exposure of, uh, of uh, astronauts uh, or the exposure of radiation for astronauts. No, he hasn't gone crazy. This astronaut is just letting off steam. Living on top of one another for six months means the astronaut's psychological well-being is paramount. Coping with the threat of danger and living in close quarters with five others does not come naturally. It has to be learned. The training covers different aspects. First of all, we learn how to deal with conflict in a team, like an aeroplane crew, for example. Then we send them up a mountain, with each astronaut accompanied by an instructor. We gradually increase the pressure on them every day, until they become resistant to it. If someone is truly resilient, you can put them under as much pressure as you like and they won't crack. This kind of training is excellent for improving your level of psychological resistance. Space is the final frontier and is also proving to be a rich resource for medical research. The lessons learned up there have numerous implications for the advance of medical science down here. We'll examine this further in the next edition of Space.